Hello viewers, Super GT here. We're back at the Def Chicane, the most infamous circuit in the Gran Turismo universe. And instantly to kick off this race, we're going to have a nice portion of destruction. No idea exactly what happened there. Big collision between a couple of players. It's only been a few seconds, but the Def Chicane has struck again. And we're not even at the Chicane yet. We're coming up to it now with, oh look at this, three abreast going in. And let me tell you, this is not an ideal scenario. So as we head in, well, as you can probably imagine, it's not going to end very well, as they end up dying of death, clinically dead. Incredible start, 1.5 second penalty, just to rub salt into the wounds. And I could go on about this race, but I'm not going to. I finished in a disappointing 10th in the end. But let's take a look at what happened at the start there. So the guy in front just not moving and then the green car just deciding to drive straight into the back of them. Anyway, this is the replay of a nice little three-way crash going in. And I think we all tried to give each other room, but three abreast into there is just never going to work. There was just a bit of contact here from behind. And to be fair, let's be nice. I think we're all trying our best and ultimately massively failing anyway for the next race we're going to start in p10 and this turned out to be an incredible race for me and it started off in a rather nice fashion because instantly we're going to get the drive on this spaniard somehow i don't know why they didn't really get a good start but they didn't and i did so we're going to move immediately into p9 and so a bit of background on this race it had a strategy where you had to use the medium and the soft tyre. I was going to start on the medium and then go on to the soft after a couple of laps. And one very important detail is that we have to survive 10 laps of the death chicane. And with the new physics in the game that were dropped in update 1.31 less than a week ago, I actually feel slightly more confident going into the death chicane. There's just something about this this set of physics that gives me a new lease of life uh, amongst much death but um, aside from that we're going to settle into this race quite nicely I've gone for the Toyota Supra which was and now is the OP car in group 3 with the recent BOP changes physics changes the Supra has returned to the front a couple of people here using the BMW um, it, it was a good car for this race, but definitely not the best. The Supra was the best. So yes, that's me choosing the best car. The only way I can have any success. Anyway, Saudi Arabian driver goes through. I wasn't sure um, what strategy was there. I, I was guessing that guy would be on a soft tyre. I couldn't quite capitalise on that situation, unfortunately. Bit of contact between the Dane and the Saudi driver. I'm going to capitalise against the Danish driver, moving back to ninth. So that's an okay first lap, could be better. A little bit wide there through turn one. And there's contact between the Saudi driver and the Brit, who's going to drop a couple of positions. And I'm going to gain a couple of positions up into P7. So now eyes forward, trying to get this chicane dead right. You have to commit really early, get the nice angle through there. And that was pretty well done. Two times out of ten, successful. Eight more times to go through there. Quite deep into this corner. Lots of trail braking to be done. Quite tricky on this brand new set of physics. Trail braking, you do have to modulate your brake quite a lot more than before. Otherwise, you will be understeering into another dimension. So now, up behind Sparks Theory, 1.5 second penalty. So I will get past on this lap. But let's see if we can try to get past a little bit sooner and minimise the time loss. I think he's got dirty tyres as he was quite slow through that section. We're going to go up the inside on the brakes, clip in the kerb, and it's job done. Up into P6, the Renault has spun around. That was wind. And he's gone like the wind in very much the wrong way as he's facing 180 degrees the uh, wrong direction. And, well, that's me up into P5. Not for long though, we're going to have a massive moment of oversteer and move back to P6. Am I going to lose P6 though? 
with uh, the Dane in the BMW, now in the tow, in the slipstream, there he is. I'm going to have to defend here. Moving to the left, the inside, of turn number one of lap number three. So that was a good lap apart from that moment, big, big moment on the kerb. And yes, under this new set of physics, it is quite easy to lose the, the rear end of the car in certain scenarios, especially on the edge of kerbs. I found that the kerbs aren't always so stable, despite they said in the patch notes that it's meant to be more stable. I don't know. That doesn't seem to be the case for me anyway. So into the big trail braking corner at the far end of the circuit. BMW a little bit wide there, just dropping two wheels beyond the white line and that's going to give him dirty tyres and a poor exit. And as a result, I'm nearly one second ahead now. I can really just fully focus on trying to catch up with Scotty in the green machine just in front. So through the triple chicane here, lots of speed to be carried. Commit quite early for this final apex on the power as early as possible to get a good drive up this hill as then we go over the hill braking just after the 100 board at the start of the curb on the right hand side pivoting nicely on the apex away in second gear slightly short shifting this car just before the end of the rev gauge at the bottom of the screen tricky corner this one the final corner final couple of corners on the lap really have to get a good exit here up into third gear we tried that on the previous lap, didn't quite work, but now fully in the slipstream of Scotty, who doesn't really have much toe from the car in front. And so this could be quite an easy job with the superior straight line speed of the Supra. Gonna fake to the right, move to the left, to the inside we go, and he doesn't really fight it. Up into P5 once again, with now the battle for third looking quite nice, as the Saudi driver looking very quick, must be on the soft tyre, and... Uh, his pace has been very good so far, making quite aggressive and decisive moves to move up to third. I'm in, I'm in fifth, and I would actually say the pace here on the mediums is quite good. I didn't take a very good line there though, having to defend to the inside to cover off Scotty into this braking zone. And um, yeah, not an ideal uh, lap there, beginning of the lap at least, having to defend, lose a, maybe half a second or so in the process but at least keeping P5. And now with a bit of a gap to Scotty, we can again look forward and try to concentrate on closing up that gap to the BMW there in P4, Luna Viking in uh, a solid fourth position. And this is going to be the end of lap four, and therefore where we are looking to end this stint. So four laps on the medium, and then we can spend six laps on the faster soft tyre. So let's make sure we get a good run into the pit lane here. Make sure we don't uh, commit an error on the exit once again. And it looks like we've got a decent exit. Pulling away slightly there from Scotty. 1.1 the gap. 1.2 actually. The car's in front going a little bit longer. We're going to commit to the four lap medium stint. And change over to the softs. I think Scotty followed me into the pit lane there. And let's see where we come out. Hopefully not into any traffic. Take a look. It looks like we have a clear, uh, clear circuit. That is good news. So this lap is rather important. The out lap of the stint. Fresh tyres. Let's go. Let's try and extend that gap to Scotty behind. So that we are not under any more pressure than we need to be. Especially committing to this deaf chicane. And this is lap number five. We got it right this time around. So five times we have survived the chicane of death. Maybe it shall not be known as the chicane of death any longer, but, well, it, it probably will be. Plenty of people are still dying there, just not me, so far. Now, up the hill we go. Lap number five. P number eight. Yes, position eight. And um, through the triple... Always a tricky section of the circuit to get right. Committing early to these corners and it's feeling good on these brand new soft tyres. Providing me with plenty of grip. And rightly so, soft tyres. Into the apex, committing nicely on the power. Away in second gear. You can see wind in front. And wind should be pitting at some point. We were ahead of him after his spin a couple of laps ago. Despite his speed which is very obvious to see in this game. 
don't think he's going to beat me on this occasion. Constant into the pits, as are a couple of other drivers. So a few drivers will have a tyre advantage over me here. But am I going to get a positional advantage by pitting earlier? Up a couple of positions there. Up into P6. And just in front, we have that battle for P4. So the Saudi driver and Luna Viking, the BMW. So now this is going to be roles reversed for the Saudi driver because I'm pretty sure he started on the soft tyre given how quick he was. And now we'll be on the medium to the end. And so we are at an advantage. Should be able to catch up this gap fairly quickly, maybe over the course of this lap and the next, and then try for an overtake. Also catching up with Luna Viking, we've got a nice two second gap now to Scotty behind. So no immediate pressure from that group. Someone to watch out for in that group though is Consta in the Genesis, the white and green machine. And this is very common occurrence in top split or second split lobbies. You've got very, very highly rated players starting from the back of the pack. And you still have to watch out for them. They can still come through from last to the podium quite effortlessly in many situations. Battling between fourth and fifth here. Luna Viking's going to run very wide and oh my goodness, gathers it up, I think. And uh, we're going to gain a position. He has actually gathered it up. He didn't spin off completely, but he has lost a handful of seconds and a handful of positions. Now it's my turn to launch a direct assault now against my fellow super driver down the main straight end of lap number six four laps remaining can we get this position he's going to defend but i'm going to move to the left hand side we're going to go for this move breaking at the end of the curb and into the apex we go nicely done quite late on the power though unfortunately on the exit and what that is going to mean is he's going to fight back move to the left hand side and it's going to be our direct duel going into the death chicane. Not an ideal scenario. There's contact between the two of us. It's quite feisty. He wants the position back. And he's going to get it. Back to third place. And I'm shoved back to fourth. I know I've got the advantage here. But it was quite frustrating to be dropped back down position. When I could be turning my attention to the, the driver in second. It's about three seconds or four seconds up the road. Slay is in the lead. 24 seconds in the lead but yet to pit. So it'll be interesting to see the gap once he does so. So through the triple, can we keep in close contention here and potentially launch an overtake into the next hairpin? Wasn't really close enough through that third apex. It's gonna be quite a big gap. He's gonna go quite defensive. I was definitely too far back to even really consider that move anyway. But now getting quite close, it's all about the exit. Can we get a good exit? perhaps go for this move into the final corner and we're spotting our breaking point up the inside we go up into p3 and now we have to get a good exit because luna viking is on the scene and we're going to move across and the saudi driver being very very aggressive tries to turn across to get in the slipstream and wow turns straight into the path of luna viking and only proceeds to spin himself off and that's quite an interesting scenario which comes up in Gran Turismo Sport. Two cars are next to each other behind you. You can essentially turn across and move to decide which of the two drivers gets your slipstream. And I didn't really expect that the Saudi driver would just simply turn right, right hand down and smash into the guy next to him. Um, I was just trying to help Luna Viking with the slipstream as I would rather him have it than um, the Saudi driver who seemed rather aggressive in this race so far. But now, looking behind, Consta is up into fourth, and that was not a welcome sight. I was hoping that Luna, or at least uh, Dane Ramster and Scotty, could have held him back a little bit longer, because now with a 1.7 gap, with two and a half laps remaining, I mean, it's not impossible that Consta can catch up from that far back. I've been driving well so far, and I'm going to have to continue driving well if we want to keep him behind. Three seconds the margin to Golden Botto in, uh, I was about to say third, in second place, I'm in third place. And that gap is actually coming down over the course of this, this lap here. So Botto might be on the medium tire and therefore this gives us an outside chance of going for second. The second was gonna happen anyway because we've got a yellow flag and that is Slayers, the leader of the race 
has absolutely binned it and I'm up into P2 after all that. So this has been an extraordinary race so far, starting in 10th position, now only 2.7 seconds away from the race lead and it's been quite a chaotic one and somehow I managed to filter my way past all of the chaos and destruction. But two laps remaining, I still have to get through this death chicane another two times otherwise I will not be having a great podium finish. So let's go, committing early, the tyres are just beginning to die of death but we still have one and a half laps or one and two thirds laps remaining so we still have to drive to the very end of the race. The gap to the leader 2.7, 2.6, it is coming down slightly but Consta, as you can see in the background very very comfortable with running wide on that on that corner which is quite tricky with these new curbs well the curbs are the same the physics are different and it's very easy to uh, to lose control of the car if you do, if you take that method on the exit of that corner and he's obviously quite comfortable with doing it uh, gaining uh, maybe a tenth or two on the exit of that corner every time the gap to the leader 2.3 is coming down but we're running out of laps i need some sort of incident for the leader i would say as uh, we are getting closer, I might be putting him under pressure, but at the same time, I'm under a lot of pressure as well, as Consta is gaining less than a second now, and he's bringing Lugan Viking along with him, and so I've not got one card to deal with, I've got two to deal with, as he's getting incredibly close, and he's fully in the slipstream range now, as we head down the main straight, I'm trying to break the toe, but there's not much hope really, as uh, we cross the line to begin the the 10th uh, and final lap of the race the guys behind do have a tyre advantage by a lap so this could be quite tricky as uh, we head towards the death chicane for the 10th and final time 2.2 the gap to the guy in front if he spins then I could be in the lead let's see as we commit fully all the, all the way in and we've done it green flag on the exit the leader did not make a mistake Gonna have to cover the inside here, force constant the long way around. And unfortunately for me, I just parked it way too much on the apex and he pulled off an incredible move. And to be fair, I got absolutely mugged off there. Concentrating way too hard on forcing him wide, and to be to be fair, I just slowed down way too much. And now I have to turn my attention. Well, I'm gonna try to overtake him back, but at the same time we've got the uh, the BMW behind of of uh, Luna Viking. So this could be a tricky scenario to be in. Well, it definitely is. Up the hill, he is quite close. I'm not going to defend it as I don't think he's close enough. Closing up on the brakes to Consta. One last opportunity for an overtake and I don't think I'm quite close enough. I need to set myself up for a good overtake across the line with a good exit out of the final corner. As a Viking goes for it, looks for it, doesn't quite get it. I'm going to get quite a poor exit here because of the line approach. And as we run down towards the finish line, Consta is easily away in second. And it's going to be a drag race to the line. Supra versus BMW. And the Supra is thankfully just going to win out. And I'm going to bring home a very satisfying P3. Yes, it was a shame to lose second. But overall, it was a great performance, I think, and a great race. And as much as it pains me to watch this again... I'm going to have to show you this overtake as I commit, I think, too far to the inside and went too slow on the inside. And Consta just took the invitation and said, thank you very much. I will mug you off around the outside. So great stuff from him. Great race, great battling overall. And just after that race, I decided it was time to improve my qualifying. So taking a nice committed line there through the Def chicane, through the triple, Again, lots of commitment and carrying that speed as much as possible. And that's the name of the game through there, getting on the power as early as possible. And then trying to get a good exit here. This was one of my weakest corners, I would say, in the race. And uh, getting on the power nicely. And that, in turn, would give me a 36.5, which would put me on pole position for the following race. And from here, it was quite a simple scenario of do some solid laps, consistent laps, and don't crash. And I say that's a simple scenario, but around this track, that isn't simple. We all know that. And, well, I survived the first lap, as you can see. How about the second lap? Yes, just fine. But the third lap was also fine. 
but the fourth lap wasn't fine as you can see here sliding slightly wide and the stupid penalty when you lose time hitting the barrier serving the penalty and watching my opponent aka dash plivis dash 88 sail off into the distance but not for long because death is never too far away when you're driving around the death chicane and not for me but for the leader for as we drive around on the ninth lap i couldn't catch up with him until this moment as we commit here you can see aka dash plivis dash 88 another soul has been taken by the shadow realm and it was such a sad sad day for him i will always remember his sacrifice and for the win he gifted me even in death such a legend